What's going on everyone? Once again I'm here, Jack from whatculture.com at the behest of King Ross but as you can see slightly more authentic settings this time I'm here in the WCPW arena so that's a nice little bonus isn't it? Cheers Ross mate. And here's all of this week's WTF moments from W... Roll the thing again. First of all, I'm going to include one of Ross's favourite things. It's a wacky crowd sign because they're really entertaining, aren't they? And they really constitute good moments. The first sign that we saw was a sign from a poor girl who had, Hey Dean Ambrose, I've just been dumped. Make me a happy girl. Grim. Grim. Do you think she's going to watch this? Like, do you think... Doesn't matter, cut that out. Next up, we had a sign right next to that that said, Seth Rollins is... Gonna need to read this off because there's quite a few. The Power Ranger Weasel Jesus. Sorry, Seth, that wasn't me. That was a guy in the crowd. Power Ranger Weasel Jesus. Excellent stuff. Now you might be thinking WWE is currently in the PG era, which means there'll not be too many sexual innuendos. Incorrect. New Day, Enzo and Cass just tore the roof off with just smut. It was disgusting. Ross would have loved it. First, Big Cass referred to the New Day's horns as massages for her pleasure. I can see you laughing behind the camera because you didn't know you were going to say this, did you? Next up, Cass then looked at Xavier Woods, looked at Francesca too and said, where was your girl last night? Because it's his legit girlfriend, obviously. No, uh, wrestling. And then he said she was with Enzo and the crowd went, oh, like an episode of Jerry Springer. I can imagine Vince McMahon watching this just going, what? No, actually, I can imagine Vince McMahon watching this going, genius, brilliant. Enzo then said he played Francesca too, like Louis Armstrong. And then Xavier stepped up and said the line of the night by far, I'm the only one who gets to blow my girl. And just when all the fun and games were reaching fever pitch, the Vaudevillains came out and kind of ruined everything because Aiden English decided to sing. And I can confirm that he's not exactly a songstress in the mode of Frank Sinatra, Michael Bublé, which actually kick. Songstress? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. I, mean, I didn't mean songstress, I meant songster. And finally, the fourth team competing at Money in the Bank came out, the club, obviously Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and they, you know, they're portraying this gimmick, they're anti-authoritarian, they're huge badasses, like, they're like Austin, they're like punk, they're the outsiders. And they shilled Camp WWE. Why would they do that? Then, the New Day and Enzo and Cass, having just torn each other limb from limb, verbally of course, then decided to get along, just because they're baby faces. That makes absolutely no sense, and as Ross would say, it's WTF o'clock. Does he even say that? No, he doesn't. She could keep it in anyway. Now, you might have noticed there were several S.H.I.E.L.D. vignettes shown throughout the show detailing their history all the way up until the breakup. And in one of those, it detailed the S.H.I.E.L.D.'s debut. And in that debut, of course, there was a man in the ring known as C.M. Punk. You might have thought that WWE would have eradicated all that from every single aspect of that video package. They didn't. I caught him. You can see it right there. There he is rolling out the ring. Look at that. You can even see the horrible cyst on his back. And no. Next up, we had another of those fantastic Bob Backlund and Darren Young vignettes. Oh, they're not good, are they? They're quite painful. Even more painful for me, because I covered this very same vignette on SmackDown. They just aired the same one. That doesn't reward viewers of SmackDown at all. Not that viewers of SmackDown should be rewarded. We're actually a terrible, masochistic people. And who should return on this episode... Can I take this off, please? It's getting a bit... And who should return on this episode of Raw but the big red machine corporate came and did he come out with his fire did he make a surprise entrance no he didn't he just walked next to stephanie and shane mcmahon in the backstage segment and he proved no use at all throughout the show he, his storyline reached a dead end definitely a wtf moment good to see you back Kane. not really sure why you were there now it was time for the segment that everyone had been waiting for the ambrose asylum featuring seth rollins and roman reigns the shield were back in the ring together once again they reminisced about all the good times it was actually quite entertaining they said they got drunk in japan once they found ambrose next to a bin passed out I can believe that, that was probably a shoot. And then they mentioned running Batista out of the company during their feud with Evolution, and now he's a big movie star, so surely they should take some credit for that success. It was a clever line, the crowd absolutely shit on it by saying, blue Batista, blue Batista, because he wore the blue. They're a clever bunch, they're clever. This one's a WTF moment because it was a good thing. Uh, Ross is probably alien to that concept. Dean Ambrose teased what we've all been wanting him to tease, the money in the bank briefcase hanging above the ring. He said, I could win that, cash it in at the end of the night and become the champion for myself. I still don't think he will. I still think that briefcase will end up in the hands of Kevin Owens because can you imagine how entertaining a heel run he could go on with the briefcase by his side? Next up, 
In my opinion, the biggest WTF moment of the night, Dean Ambrose attacks Roman Reigns and plants him with dirty deeds. Dean, excellent stuff. Prefer you as a tweener. Could this mean that we'll get that, that triple threat we all so desperately want? I think they'll save it for WrestleMania, but it's certainly interesting to see where it goes. Next up, a very weak point of a very entertaining show, the women's division. It seemed to have taken a step back into the dark ages of the Divas division. Neither Charlotte nor Paige got a proper entrance. They got what we call a jobber's entrance. I don't like that term. And it was a it was a poor match. It lasted about two minutes. And that leads us on to the next WTF moment. Charlotte lost in about two minutes to Paige, who hasn't been relevant since she turned face for no reason. WTF. Next up, and we're sticking with the women's match because it was really bad. They've already... Oh, f <laughs> Can we keep that in, though? <laughs> Don't know what happened there. King Ross from afar, being a dick. Next up, there's discord already between Dana Brooke and Charlotte. Why have they done this already? They've only been together since the last pay-per-view. Again, it makes absolutely no sense. But at least Dana got to show off her fantastic facial expressions. She always looks pissed off. It's brilliant. Next, they gave away Cesaro v Sami Zayn on free TV. Are you mental, WWE? They had a fantastic match in NXT, which featured the first ever WWE instance of Sami Zayn diving through the corner uh, and DDT and Cesaro on the outside. And then they gave away the match on TV. It had a fantastic finish with a sort of weird sunset flip into a Canadian destroyer. But again, can't we have saved that for a pay-per-view? It would have made for a fantastic match. Hopefully we get it in the future. Next, and we've already mentioned him once, CM Punk was indirectly referenced again as John Cena decided to drop pipe bombs, yo. Oh, it's bouncy in the ring, I like that. Cena referenced several promotions from outside of WWE, including New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and most bizarrely of all, PWG, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. So, fair enough lads, Cena, keep it up. I like you as a rebel, it's good. And just for my opinion of Cena was soaring, came crashing back down again as he called AJ Styles the leader of the bitch club. Wonder how long it took him to write that. Probably longer than it took me to write this, if you couldn't tell already. Next up, AJ Styles surprised everyone because Cena presented him with two contracts for the match on Sunday. One which said singles match, John Cena v AJ Styles. One which said John Cena v AJ Styles with the club at ringside. And AJ signed the one that banned Anderson and Gallows from accompanying him to the ring. It's very interesting to see how this will play out on pay-per-view. Hopefully it still keeps AJ strong. It certainly looks like it will for the moment. Next up, is it just me? Or does this weekend's Money in the Bank feel a little bit like WrestleMania? No, it doesn't. But WWE mentioned it about five or six times throughout the show. I think Shane mentioned it. I think Cole mentioned it. Cena certainly mentioned it. They're really trying to push it as a bigger show as WrestleMania. And we all know it's not. It's not even really the best Money in the Bank in the history of Money in the Bank pay-per-views. As we all know, 2011 blew everything else out of the water. So I don't know why they're trying to push that. Next, we've reached the main event and let's just throw everyone in. Uh, we've got Dean Ambrose v Jericho in the ring. We've got Owens and Zayn on commentary. We've got Cesaro as the ring announcer and we've got Alberto Del Rio as the timekeeper. That was my favorite one because the camera panned across to him and there was just two very nervous officials there and Del Rio was stood upright with his top off with the bell in one hand and the ringer in the other hand. That sounds dirty as f Cut that. Oh my word, WWE, you respected continuity. It's something we never thought they'd do, but Kane actually referenced the time that he hooked up Shane McMahon's balls to a car battery way back in 2003. That was 13 years ago, and it got mentioned on an episode of Raw in 2016. I would love to see more of this in the future. And finally, the last WTF moment of the whole show, and I'm baking under these lights. Wrestlers must be a hardy bunch, you know? Uh, Chris Jericho scaled the ladder at the end of the big brawl that we all knew was gonna happen took down the Money in the Bank briefcase and pretended like it's going to be him that's going to win on Sunday. We know it's not. You're probably the least favourite. Never mind, Jericho. Good try, mate. I'll just be Ross for the last bit. Hang on. So that's all we've got this week for this week's WTF Mirror Mods from W. You know what he, the, the thing that he does? I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com and I'm counting down the amount of these videos that I've still got to do. Not many, I promise. I'll see you soon. Thank you.